so many deans are also looking forward. So we can copy if you care, or your presentation will be made as a reference. So take it away. Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to our ADP CN officers and CNE staff, to our esteemed speakers and panelists. Magandang umaga po. So my topic is about uh, my topic is about best practices in designing learning packets for offline and offline delivery. So I'm Dr. John Michael Lorena, Dean of St. Luke's College of Nursing, Trinity University of Asia. First things first, I would like to make a disclaimer. Our institution is an expert in LMS. We are still adapting to our LMS. But however, I would say that my institution is brave enough to take on the challenge of embracing this technology amidst the pandemic crisis. That's why appreciation goes to my Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Gisela D.A. Luna, and Dr. Wilfred Yu for allowing me to present our best practices to you. And at the same time, give me pointers on how to present this, uh, this topic to all of you. And also special shout out to my St. Luke's College of Nursing family. So basically my objectives are the following. I would be discussing the trigger of all of these innovations the required mindset for faculty members, the heart of my discussion, which is our LMS, we call it TLC. And of course, the bumpy roads or the challenges that we would traverse as we introduce this new system to our students this first semester. I think this was in the middle of March, 2020, when COVID-19 has resulted to suspend works and even closures of schools, not only in the Philippines, but around the world. And I think Trinity University of Asia was not spared from that. And that is the reason why my institution has come up with alternative learning modalities such as e-learning. However, there was numerous complaints from this e-learning modality, like this, the, the university has no unified learning management system. There are also issues on internet connectivity. And even the mental health concerns of our students were brought onto the picture. To cut the story short, our students complied and we successfully ended the second semester. However, there are lessons learned. So Trinity has a lot to think about, but I think Trinity has to be bold enough to embrace this technology in the coming semesters. Maybe that is the reason why the top management has created a task force and it was named TOA eLearning Resource Team, which is the main goal of standardizing the courseware resources and training modules and possibly create flexible learning options for our students. Honestly, it was really a daunting task because how can a medium-sized university come up with a unified learning management system in just three months prior to August 24? August 24 is the start of our semester. We did the baby steps there was numerous meetings, negotiations that happened just for us to jumpstart this technology. And I think the first project was a creation of a seminar. We call this seminar Trinity In-House Teacher Formation Training, or T3, which has attended by more than 250 faculty members, permanent, probationary, even part-time. So these are the topics that were discussed. And I think these topics has provided us concepts, principles, and guidelines that would serve as basis as we create our learning management system that is unified across all colleges, an open source cloud-based LMS from a third party provider. In terms of designing our learning packet, we follow a very simple framework. We started with determining our aims and learning comes, followed by modifying the course content, enhancing our teaching methods and resources, and modify assessment. If you would see, our learning outcome is aligned with our teaching methods and assessment. So we usually call it constructive alignment. And for the course content, we tried to take note of the most essential topics for our NCM courses. Now for the enhanced teaching methods, obviously for this semester, we would be focusing on e-learning. But of course, when you do e-learning, 
you need quality e-learning resources. And that's why I'm very proud to say that I, I think two weeks ago, we just had launched our virtual library. And of course, in terms of modifying the assessment tools, since our curriculum is OBE, we tried to create activities that would literally enhance their critical thinking skills and less of the pen and for examination. And for the monitoring and review, obviously our LMS has given us access, the administrator and the deans to monitor the performance, the attendance of our faculty and students, and as well as provide feedback to the training modules. Now, for our teaching modules, we simply follow this very basic framework. And this is the modular learning. We tried compartmentalizing NCM courses within the semester, meaning one module is a prerequisite to the other module. And each of the module would be containing discussions, PowerPoint, and process. Moreover, we have utilized this principle of Robert Gagnius, which is the nine events of instruction. And these nine events of instructions are widely used as a foundation upon which to structure an online course. So what is an example of a module that has the nine events of instruction? This is just an excerpt. So if you would see, it is tabular. We have activities, strategies, time allotment, and remarks if there is any. So we try to be as creative as possible in terms of the strategies because we would be doing it online. And of course, with simultaneous with our module development, we also had been doing the development of our online learning platform. So ladies and gentlemen, I humbly present our TLC. And the TLC is called TUA Learning Cloud. So if you would be looking at our website, it's there, the link is there, the TLC. And I think the principle or the tagline that we wish to impart to our students is that no student should be left behind. So if you would open this link, it would lead you to this interface. And for our unified learning platform, we have chosen Moodle, which is a learning platform that is proven and trusted worldwide. Of course, with the adaptation to this new LMS, there would be problems on Wi-Fi, access to gadgets, and even standardized courseware and instructional design. And maybe that is the reason why TUA has created a flexible learning option that is adapting to the situation of an individual or groups of students. So there are three main approaches of our flexible learning options. Basically, number one, we follow the synchronous learning approach. The students are in the Moodle, but we are using a plugin, and the plugin is the Google Meet. Now, for our asynchronous learning, the students would be have to be connected to Moodle, so they have to be they have to have a very good internet, and the professors would just be giving them activities that they have to accomplish at a prescribed period of time. And since our students are using Moodle, Google Meet a lot, the university has to provide a very strong internet resources. And maybe that is the reason why the TOA management have decided to give all our students from undergraduate to graduate students pocket Wi-Fi of 70 gigabyte monthly data plan. However, this 70 gigabyte was already increased to 98 gigabyte. And this packet Wi-Fi will be delivered to their place of residence since no students are allowed to enter our premises. Now, in terms of a student that has problems with connectivity and access to gadgets, we offer the modular distance learning. The tools we created would just be printed and be given to the student with an expectation that he would be accomplishing the activity set by the professor. In our syllabus, this is an innovation. This is a standard syllabi. What we did, we added an additional column 
and we call it the FLO column. Now this FLO column would now contain the prescribed and the alternative learning modality. Since TUA is very new to this venture, of course there would be challenges. Challenges like how can we enhance further our IT infrastructure? How can we make our internet connections stronger? The second challenge is how can we help students access quality e-learning resources? Of course, there are also challenges like student adjustment, limited faculty engagement, but I strongly believe that the e-learning is much more than the laptop and the gadgets. It should require more human relationships, or should I say teaching through relationships. When I say teaching through relationships, you are giving your student an opportunity to tell their stories. Because technically, our students are not black slaves. They also have their own stories to tell. And we learn from it. And having knowledge about our students would equip us to teach them better because we know where they are coming from. And mixing this formal teaching with teaching through relationships will even expand our horizons beyond the confines of our discipline. According to the research of Fraser Sullivan, Witherspoon, and UC about faculty perceptions, students have identified effective online practices that every educator must have. Number one, an educator should be able to facilitate learning. Number two, an educator should effectively connect with students. That's the principle of mom-based lecture, connectedness. Number 